Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! And welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. A special, special guest. A guy who's just released, or is going to release his new album, Thorns. Uh, the one, the only, um, my friend, Tony Martin. And of course, joining us with us today as a co-host, Giles Lavery. What's going Never on, guys? Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? Who's that guy, Who's Giles? That guy? <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Tony, right off the bat, let me just uh, let me just pull it up the sheet here. Thorns will arrive on January fourteenth uh, on Battle God Productions and Dark Star Records. Um, Battle God will handle the distribution in Australia, Asia, Europe, and, ja uh, and Japan, while Battlestar will handle it in North and South America. Yeah. You know, right off the bat, you know, Giles, you want to start off with a question on the new album? Well, I love the record. I think this is going to be, this is perfect timing, I think, because over the last sort of five or so years or longer, I think your era of Sabbath has got a real, people have taken a, a second look at it, or even a first look at it, if they didn't listen to it the first time. Right. And those records have really come into their own as far as whether it's people, you know, finding used copies or listening to them on YouTube or however they're listening to them. Mm. There's a lot of love for that era, which I, you know, I was the guy in the early 90s that was, in, in, you know, at school telling people, you've got to listen to The Headless Cross. Right. Don't just listen to Paranoid. You've got to listen, you know, I was that guy. So, first of all, why now? Do you feel the timing's right? Is that a big part of it? And, or is it just, is this something, a record that you've been working on, you know, for years and years and years? Or did you just sort of last year go, right, time for another solo album? Okay, thanks for your question, mate. Um, yes, uh, and yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> did, you, did that really inform you? Um, uh, well, the time is right. Um, the time's right for lots of reasons and reasons that we didn't intend. I mean, you know, COVID put us into a lockdown in all around the world in different places where, it's, you know, can't do much, can't go anywhere. So music in whatever you listen to is uh, important now. Uh, I think music is a light in the darkness, kind of. So for that reason, the timing is, is right. Um, but yes, it has taken years and years and years. Um, it's actually taken 10 years to get this album running um that's because uh my life my career my existence took me into the studio as a songwriter uh, recording all that kind of thing and i do a lot of guest appearances and um sessions and stuff like that so in my world when something comes into the studio the solo album gets put to one side and then you right. work on that then the solo album comes out and then something else comes in and you put the solo album to one side and then you work on that. So it just got stretched out and stretched out, you know, in time. Um, but also it sort of evolved. The album originally was called Book of Shadows. Yeah. And I was going in that kind of direction until I met Scott McClellan on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, he started sending me uh, riffs and things. and. Uh, slowly this thing changed well by the time i was even thinking about getting it completed um uh, uh oh god what was the guy who just he released uh, an album called book of shadows um um uh, oh, come on tell me you Bruce know what dickinson. it's coming to my head like i, I know who released bruce it i just dickinson. don't remember who it was <laughs> yeah it was bruce dickinson wasn't it bruce, they released yeah. uh, oh, no, book, book, iron maiden did book of souls Book of, Book of Souls. Souls. Right. Book of Souls, so yes, I, yes. That's right, that's it. So I thought, okay, well, we can't use that title anymore. So then it changed to, like, Black Widow Angel, and then it changed again, and eventually we arrived at the, the name Thorns. So in answer to your question, <laughs> it's taken 10 years for lots of different reasons, but the timing is right, I think. You know, now people are looking forward to, you know, kicking the heels and, and getting out there and, and rocking again, I think. I think mm -hmm. so. And and let me ask you this, you know, me and Giles, we've heard it, and personally, I and we've already reviewed it, and we thought it was, you know, your your voice is at its peak. You know, you're Thank you're you. doing you're doing a great, what a great vocal, great Thank songs, you. and a professional production. 
not one of these half-assed productions that you hear today, a beautiful production. For those who haven't heard the album, just describe your, the, the musical direction you chose on this album, on the various okay. songs. If you listen to this album, that's what it sounds like. That's what's in my head. <laughs> that's what's that's what my head does. It it flips from one kind of thing to another, and so you've got a mixture of really heavy stuff with some unplugged acoustic stuff. There's a lot of melodies. Um, there's always a story. Every everything I write has to have a story. There's there's got to be a beginning, a middle, and an end to everything. So there's always a, a tale to follow. Um, there are lots of people on the album. Um, mm -hmm. Friends. They're all known to me. They're all great people there's no strangers um you know apart from scott mcclellan who i met on facebook you know 12 15 years ago um everybody else is is known to me and i trust them and um you know i like what they do so it's a mixture of like this whole family buddy rock acoustic stuff that just goes everywhere and that's kind of what my head sounds like if you was me that's what mm -hmm. it would sound like in my head just all over the place and just enjoying every minute of it it's just great to have that freedom to bounce off any wall that you want and not be stuck in a box which is a curse for me um, so it's diverse like, that's what you're saying it's yeah, a diverse piece of work yeah right? it's it's a bit of a curse for me my head won't allow me to stay in one place <laughs> too long well it is, a, it is certainly a brilliant album and i'm i'm excited Thank you. i'm excited Thank for for everyone else to hear, you know, so we can all talk about it on Facebook and you know yeah. celebrate, celebrate it because I, I think it's it's brilliant. Again, it's long overdue, but again, the timing is right. Any I think any, so. any plans to reissue your first solo record? Ah, ooh, I don't know about that. You see, this is what I'm all about with inside my head, right? The the first one you're talking about, back where I belong, right? Yeah, yeah. That, okay, so that was me trying to be. Uh, 1980s kind of pop rock dude <laughs> okay it was it was kind of okay ish for the time but that wasn't really me and then the second one scream well it got a bit heavier by then but that still wasn't really me this one is really me this is what i am this is what tony martin sounds like if i'm let loose <laughs> right right so, what no. about, so what about um so pamela moore you know, famous from her role in Queen's Rake, you know, yeah. Sister Mary. She, yeah. How did you go about? And and, and at first, I, it wasn't in the liner notes that she was there, so I didn't really. I go, who's this voice? I couldn't pin it down. I go, who's this person? And yeah. it was Pamela Moore. So you want to tell us about how that came about and her contributions yeah. to the album? Um, I've never met Pamela Moore. <laughs> okay. She she uh, is another. <laughs> Neither um, have I. Oh, wow. That's cool. Um, <laughs> she was another Facebook friend. Mm -hmm. But it turned out that the, we've known each other now on Facebook for years and years and years. And so from time to time, we've got to bump into each other on Facebook and we have this little mini uh, bust up thing. She's got exactly the same birthday as me. Nice. And so she's, she says, like, you're my, you're my brother from another mother. And you're like, you know, like this dude who I relate totally to. Well, we've never met. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've had this banter thing going on for some years. Now, the song Thorns, which is the one she sings on, yeah. um, it, it's really about domestic abuse, kind of. A, a woman who is severely abused and she self-harms, you know, with people cut themselves and stuff like that. And so she goes inward and then the character can't then uh, engage with anybody. And any word of kindness feels like thorns sticking in the skin. I just can't stand it. Well, mm -hmm. I can't sing that. I, I needed a girl to sing that. And so I started thinking about it. And then her name came up. I went, Pamela, Pamela Moore. Oh, yeah, Pamela Moore. So I got onto Facebook and said, do you want to sing something? She went, yes, of course I do. And that was it. <laughs> she was on the album. So I think she did that. a great okay. job. Yeah, yeah, just oh. great job of putting across that um, tension and that fear of, of a female voice. You know, it just, ah, it's great. Really, really cool. No, she did a fantastic job. Well, I guess the inev and another inevitable question. Will the Sabbath albums ever, ever get reissued? 
that you were on. You know what? I have no idea. You probably with, know more with, than with, I do. With bonus tracks and a nice box and like you know, like they've done with almost every other Sabbath album. Okay. You. Let me tell you how that came about because okay. I think it's weird. <laughs> right. It is weird. Right. You re we had a, a, a guy in Black Sabbath called Jeff Nichols. He was the keyboard player. You know Jeff? Mm -hmm. Yes. He died uh, four years ago. And um, when we was at Jeff Nichols' funeral service, um, I bumped into Tony Iommi there. And he said, I've got loads of stuff to play you. And, um, you know, we have to get together and see if we can write some new uh, songs. And then maybe we can re-release the Tony Martin era. Uh, albums. I thought, well, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, whatever. Then the phone went dead for ages, months and months and months and months. So I called him back and he said, yeah, uh, uh, come over to the house and uh, we'll talk about it. So I said, okay. So I went to his house and he said, we can't do it. I went, what? He said, we can't do it. I said, why not? He said, because there's an agreement with the guys of Sabbath that they can only re-release something under the Sabbath name if it's the original Sabbath members. Nobody else can record anything under the Sabbath name. But how, how, does that so, square, how does that square with all the reissues they've done with Dio stuff? Do you remember they changed, they went out and they called it Heaven and Hell, I think, didn't they, or something? They went out as a band. Um, what they said, what he said was, what we can do is just reissue the albums right but we can't add anything to it so what we're expecting is if he ever gets around to it is for the the tony martin era albums apart from eternal idol because that's owned by somebody else if the tony martin uh, era albums to be reissued remixed probably in the case of um forbidden but uh i think it'll just be as it was. However, the phone went dead again. Yeah. And now I haven't got a clue. I, honestly, I really don't know what's happening. So, but you, you know, if it does happen, you can use outtakes from the respective eras, though, I, I would assume. You just can't um, record new. Only stuff that's already been recorded uh, at the time. At um, the time, right. So, you know, we, I searched through, I've got hundreds of tapes and, um, you know, things from the writing sessions. I've got the, the tapes when Eddie Van Halen was, was with us writing on uh, Cross Purposes. I sent that over to Tony. That appeared on YouTube. I don't know how that got out. But um, I've got all sorts of stuff like that. And I thought that was the kind of thing that they would, you know, reissue the albums with. But, mate, I have no idea. Like I said, you probably know more than me. What about, like, I read, thank you for that. I read the autobiography of Tony, of, uh, Tony Iommi, you know, and I'm sure you did too, or at least maybe you've heard about it. Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I mean, do you think he was a little unfair? I mean, like I reading and I mean, you, you were there holding the band together. You brought in so much great music that people have appreciated more over the years. You know, to this day, people are saying, you know what, that I missed that Tony Martin era. Um, were you kind of disappointed in his autobiography and sort of maybe the portrayal of you? Um, I didn't actually read it. I really didn't. Um, okay. But people have told me, um, you know, excerpts of what's in there. Um, he, you see, he's looking at it from his point of view. If you ask me the same stories, you will get a different answer. Perspective. Um, so I, my story hasn't been told. Nobody really has uh expanded on anything that happened with me in the days and I keep meaning to write a book but I'm just not disciplined enough to be able to to put something together um, like if you're listening to me now and the way I talk I just talk <laughs> and I wanted to write a book in that way to explain everything but that doesn't work in a book apparently um, so anyway uh, I have a different take on it uh, from my side um, you would have to understand that I am 12 years younger than the guys. And it was it was like being the younger brother. You know, if you've got like, uh, if you're a 20-year-old bloke and you've got like a, I don't know, 12-year-old brother, you don't want to take him around with you everywhere. Do I have, he's going to cramp your style and stuff like that. Their circle of friends is completely different to my circle of friends. Um, you know, the distance, the experience they had was way more than I'd ever had. Um, so it was just a disconnection 
between me mm. and the rest of the guys. And all the way, I was having to try and keep up with them, if you know what I mean. It was just a constant learning curve all the time I was with them. That made it really hard work. On top of that, they had like four managers or something like that, and they don't speak direct to you. So the, the message the message goes for, up from them to the managers, through the managers, down through my manager to me, and then back up across down. And it just made it really hard work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that background and not knowing if you're in the band or not, um, made it really difficult. Uh, so they have a completely different take on it, you know, to to my side of the story, which is, a, you know, a bit more realistic, I think. But um, yeah, uh, I don't uh, doubt that that's what he feels. But um, I, you, until you hear the other side of the story, you so know, when's you, that book coming then? When's that book uh, coming out? When are you going to get I, it down? I know you've been telling me this. You text me, yeah, the I book's know. coming. The book's coming. The book's coming. I but I have tried. I have tried. Okay. And I've got <laughs> okay. Bits of you can do, you can do an audio book. Uh, you know what? That's not that's a bad right. idea. That's right. I, I just, I just, so just, just an audio book. That's all you got to do. Yeah, yeah. I just talk my ass off, and then you know. But that's the way it sort of comes out of me. If you ask me what date it was, I haven't got a clue what date it was. But I know, right. you know, what the thing is. I would have to go back and check, you know, in the tour books and find out what was happening at the time to to put a date or a time or things like that. But, um. You know, uh, I've been associated with Sabbath for 11 years or something since 1986 was the first contact I had with their then manager, which was Patrick Meehan at the time. And uh, they were having problems with Glenn Hughes doing the seventh star, was it, at the time? Yeah, I think they were yeah. doing it. was, yeah. Yeah, and then I think they'd had some problems with Glenn, um, and they put me on standby, which scared me to death because I can't sing like Glenn Hughes. Nobody can sing like Glenn Hughes. Um, and then they found Glenn, and then it went to Ray Gillen. Then he left. <laughs> then they put me on standby again. And then they got me down to the studio in London, and that's how it all began, you know? So there's lots of stories from my side which don't get told. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, maybe one day, eh? Maybe one day you get that, that book out. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it going to be a, is it going to be another 10 years before you do another solo record i don't think so i mean I, i'm already writing more with scott I mean, he's a great great guy to work with and um reminds me in many ways of working with tony i am he's so prolific just keeps on churning stuff out it's amazing you know how a, a mind creates and freedom to create is it, just brilliant um mm. The great thing about Scott really is um, he's not like a, a, a raging great solo player, but his riffs and his the story he tells with um, guitar is, is really cool. And it works with my voice. So to that end, the labels asked me to write some more tracks and then they'll release a double vinyl album right. later on in the year. So that's going to be something to look forward to uh, later on. Um, but we've also, he's also sent me 39 new tracks of guitar that we could get another <laughs> two albums out of, you know. Cool. You know, oh, I don't think it'll be that long in the future. We've already started writing more. So, um, right. to that end, you know, when, when you think about touring, uh, I don't have a band. I hire the musicians you know, whoever's available at the time makes it awkward because you have to wait for people to be available. Um, but these guys on the album, I, I think they'd be the guys that I would like to take with me. I, I know other names have been mentioned, but you know, I haven't decided yet on what to do with it. But in any case, until the COVID thing sort of gives us a chance, my country might say, yeah, you can go. But your country might say, no, <laughs> you ain't coming here. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, it's, just, what, it's what I it's what I do for a living. I manage yeah. a number of different artists, as you know, and it's just been a logistical nightmare that no one can understand unless they're trying yeah. to do. It. Yeah, and I, honestly, I don't think it'll be this year. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be next year. So in the meantime, you know, hey, what would you write another album and maybe two or two albums, you know, after yeah. 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 one of them. What, what kind of what kind of set list would you do? Would you would you bring in, you know, the Black Sabbath? material or do you want to st strictly stick to 
Tony Martin stuff, or what would you do? You'd, you'd have to include some, some Black Sabbath stuff. I mean, that's why people know who I am. Um, some Dio, maybe some, you know, no. some Dio. Oh, just strictly why, Tony why, Martin why, era. Why, why would he go out and do Dio songs, Jimmy? Because he can. <laughs> that's why. Because he can. He's the only Black <laughs> Sabbath singer other than Dio who can do Dio. That's why. There's plenty of Sabbath I stuff. Could. The, the, the right, Tony. Yesterday. Who, who, like, well, look. I, I heard. You, I heard. Uh, sorry. Go on, let me just tell you this, right? I, Go I, ahead. I used to do some Dio stuff because Jeff Nichols was involved in the writing of some of that um, Heaven and Hell and and, and things like that. Um, and so, uh, in respect to Jeff, we used to. He used to be in my band, and we used to play some of that. But now Jeff isn't there. I tend to concentrate on the Tony Martin era of Black Sabbath. So it would be, you know, Headless Cross or um, uh, Eternal Idols stuff or things like that, but not masses of it. I mean, I, I don't want this thing to get hijacked by, you know, the, the Sabbath thing. And, and here's the other main point is because I don't have a band and I have to hire the musicians, if you're not careful, it's it, it can start sounding and looking like a tribute act. Yeah. Because, you know, right. you, there's a certain sound that goes with Black Sabbath, and you have to learn that. It's not it's not immediately obvious. Um, and so you, you can't just throw a bunch of guys together and expect it to sound like Black Sabbath. It, it sounds, it can sound like a bit of a tribute act, and it can look a bit like a tribute act as well, of people running around the stage and stuff, which is is not the sort of atmosphere that you, you need when you're playing that Sabbath material. So it is hard... Um, I, I would do some Sabbath stuff and I would do like, especially the Tony Martin era because I know what that is supposed to do. But mm -hmm. um, then, uh, you know, so concentrating on the solo things and as, especially with this um, uh, new guitar player, Scott, who's really, really worth looking out for. I think you'll hear more of him along the way, but um, you know, uh, it, it's, it would have to be worked out. And I've told the labels this, that if we do, Tour at this, it's just got to be done right. You know, it's okay. it can't yeah. be just thrown together. It, it's really, really got to be done right. So, it's something we have to work on. And for me, that means starting from scratch from the very beginning, and that just makes it slightly harder. Along with the COVID thing and the and the the rest of the stuff, it's just an extra thing that you got to take care of. You know. Yep. yep. Have you ever sat down with Ozzy? Talk to Ozzy, had a conversation on the phone with Ozzy or no, Sharon for I, that matter. No, and I only spoke to Ronnie James Dio once. <laughs> okay. He, How did that go? <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Iommi had invited me to backstage to um, one of the gigs of the Dehumanizer tour, and Ronnie wasn't happy at all that I was there. He was just, the fuck is he doing here? <laughs> so I just momentarily, just momentarily managed to uh, get hold of his attention as he walked by, run it, run it. So he walked over and he just stared at me like this. <laughs> and I said, Ronnie, look, I love what you do, man. I, this whole singer shit, I'm, I'm not interested, but I just wanted to tell you that you're a hard act to follow. And he said, good, and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Wow. That was it. So, you know, I've very briefly spoken to Ronnie, but he was unhappy that I was there. He, he wasn't uh, pleased that Tony Iommi had invited me, but that's when that whole dehumanizer thing was, oh, it's all very mixed up and they were, they were having problems. You know, I don't really know what the problems were, to be honest, but um, they'd asked me to go back and do some stuff with the dehumanizer thing. Um, and I, I did try. But um, it, it, we couldn't do it. They did, didn't have enough time for us to rewrite it and do stuff. So they carried on with Ronnie in the end. But it was all very tense at the time. All right. Yes. Well, and you came back for Cross Purposes, which was a, yet another brilliant record. I love that one. Cross yeah. of Thorns. Speaking of Thorns, Cross of Thorns, Eyewitness. Yes. You know, Immaculate Deception, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. That's some absolutely fantastic tunes on that record. I love yeah. that one. I do. Um, and a shift from where we were um, before, because Jeff Nichols brought a um, melodic keyboard background to Sabbath music, which enabled uh, Ronnie and Tony to explore 
you know, layers of sounds and things like that, which was completely different from the Aussie era, which was like a three-piece band. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they were making much more basic music. So once we'd got past Tear, Headless Cross and Tear, which we were making like things complicated for ourselves because I was doing, you know, 50 tracks of vocals and <laughs> Tony was doing like 20 tracks of guitars and, and stuff like that. When it came to Cross Purposes, it went back pretty much to the the basic thing where we wrote it before we went into the studio rather than work on it when we we're in the studio so when Giza came back for cross purposes it kind of went back to the sort of three piece sound Jeff was still there but it wasn't lots of stuff being layered um, so it was a very big shift from tier to uh, cross purposes you know but it was great uh, working with Giza was really cool yeah what about the tour of, um, you know, when you went out on tour, I guess it would be after, I guess it would be cross purposes in the U.S. versus Europe. Yeah. The, the the difference in, you know, the audience, you know, how they accepted you or, you know, or, or Black Sabbath in general, more in Europe than in North America. Right, yeah. Europe has definitely been the prominent place for me. Uh, whether you could say for Sabbath, I mean, I mean Sabbath had a, a huge following in America already, uh, um, and that that's hard to uh, uh, what would you say? It, it's hard to beat, or it's hard to match, or you know, it, it's uh, a feeling, uh, a, a challenge. You know, that it's really, really big to overturn. Not that you want to overturn it, but. To match it or to take that and make it your own is is hard. And so generally, I think what the idea was, let's go to Europe, get it all built up and, you know, functioning and working, then we'll go to America. Well, it kind of worked and it was reasonably well received, but, um, you know, it, it, it took a long time, I think, and that's why you're hearing now people are just reaching out for the albums now because they've had space now to sort yeah. of think about it and to sort of reconnect with the albums that we were doing at the time. Now it kind of makes sense. But at the time, you're just following another singer, you know, back then. Um, and uh, Ronnie had to do it as well. I, I mean, Jeff Nichols told me that when Ronnie first joined, he his problem was following Ozzy. You know, he had a, a real big shift to and that kind of challenge for him. So every singer goes through it and... Uh, Sabbath's had more singers than, <laughs> than, you know, most people have had breakfasts. But, um, you know, it's a challenge, mate. It's a challenge. <laughs> well, I think you rose to it very, very, very well indeed. Mm. Thank you. I did my best. Uh, I'm not sure there is anything else I could do. As I said to you, I, I mean, I was 12 years behind them in everything, experience and age and um, it was a constant learning curve for me. I, I never ever quite caught them up, you know, because that experience was always 12 years ahead of me. And, and right, right. you know, it, it was really hard. It was like being the younger brother that nobody wanted to take with them. But they, <laughs> they, they liked my voice. And I was cheap. <laughs> so they got you on the cheap, huh? <laughs> they got you on the cheap. Yeah, um, they got me on the cheap. <laughs> <laughs> what a, okay so there was heaven and hell i mean could there be a martin i don't know the headless cross band you know you just you know, martin Ooh. goes out with iomi and you know we call oh. it headless cross or cross purposes or we can call it tear i don't know we could call it something of of, Head, of some headless sort of cross. legacy there headless cross is mine you can't have that one no um but yeah it could be called something but mm -hmm. i honestly I, I don't think it will happen um to me, I, I think the only place they could go was uh, back with Ozzy. And I, I did keep asking them when I was there. I said, are you guys like planning to get back together? No, no, no. It's just rumors. It's just rumors. Yeah, right. With with Black Sabbath, you have to read between the lines like constantly. <laughs> and right. my manager was telling me stuff. That, so we already kind of knew which way it was going. Um, and so, you know, it, it was just like everything was just hard work, really. Yeah, well, what a great legacy and what a great body of work, and, and hopefully it gets Thank the, you. hopefully it gets the the reissue treatment it deserves one day. But you know, let's not worry about that for the minute, because on Friday there was a fantastic new yes. Tony Martin record out called yes. Thorns. Everyone Thorns. should buy it. Everyone should buy um, it twice. 
actually. Twice. They should buy they should definitely buy it twice. Tony, twice. has everything been okay with the payments over the years with the record companies with uh, publishing or royalties? Have you had any issues with that? Yeah, loads of issues. Everybody has issues with like, you know, royalties and getting stuff. It it never everybody promises stuff in the beginning and it never quite works out um the way you sort of think. So you you're usually grateful for whatever does come, but um you know if, if the album isn't on sale you're not going to get any royalties so you know the the whole tony martin era uh, black sabbath stuff isn't on sale so i don't get a penny from black sabbath not nothing it's not on sale um so i my royalties tend to come from all the guest appearances and the se sessions that i do you know since then um my voice appears on 75 albums Jeez. or projects or something now and so you know that's what keeps me afloat uh, stuff like that but i don't get a penny from sabbath and that's because it's just not on sale i mean if they ever reissue it then uh i would expect to get something but, but uh, yeah you know I, i'd have to wait and see I, go ahead charles well i think i'm good any any, any final questions jimmy i think my final question would be i i you spoke about it really briefly, Eddie Van Halen. Since, of course, the passing of Eddie, yeah. um, I don't know your 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 feelings about you know just working with him in that brief period. Uh, thoughts of his you know as a guitar player, as a person, as an influence. Oh, man. I mean, as a guitar player, what can you say? I mean, the dude guitar. was just talented, and he he stumbled across a technique which was just unique to him and like didn't everybody try to do that you know yeah. since it's just like a, a fabulous and i love you know people who are at the top of their game um i, I just love that i mean i i don't have a, a an ounce of jealousy inside me if somebody's good at something you praise them for you know for whatever they do whatever it is because if they're at the top of the game it's a joy you know it's just a joy and i didn't even know he was coming so like Tony Iommi just turned up with Eddie Van Halen. Hey, just, look who I brought. Yeah, it was just like that. Went, what? You're kidding me. I haven't combed my hair or anything. <laughs> 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 it was just like a complete surprise. He just turned up. Um, I was, Eddie's just popped around for a jam. Okay, so <laughs> I put the. I have an eight track. I had an eight track recording machine. I just pressed record. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just press record just press record leave that on um so uh, i did get the recording of eddie sort of playing with us which is <laughs> it was amazing really cool and then in no time at all he, he'd gone again and i never saw him again i only saw him once at donnington way you years back um uh, and we was backstage uh, at the time but we never got a chance to speak then so my my uh you know, relationship with Eddie was very short and very limited, but wow, how cool was that? You just, got a yes, story. That, was awesome. that was awesome. Yeah. yeah, and he came in and he sort of he just brought his guitar and plugged into one of Tony's amps, and they just jammed and just played. And I just sat there going, "Oh my he, god!" He didn't he didn't he didn't actually play on the record though, did he? He was he, he, no he demos. Yeah, co-wrote co the song. I think is that. If yeah. I remember correctly, uh, weren't they on tour or something? And they happened to be in England at the time. Yeah. And uh, Tony uh, managed to grab Eddie on, you know, a couple of days and, and sort of hung out. But I think they were on tour, so no, he, he didn't play on the actual album. But I do have the recording of, of Eddie um, uh, playing on, um, uh, what track was it now? Evil, Evil Eye. Evil Eye. Yeah, yeah Evil Eye. Um, and it was, it was fab. It was really good. I mean, as soon as the recording starts, you can tell who is who. You can yeah. tell. Iomi's playing and you can tell Eddie's playing. Um so it's so obvious, but it sounds great when you when you listen to it. It's really, really cool. cool. You know what? I, I just have one last question. Yeah, uh, keep going. Did, I'll just and, talk. and that's it, and then I'll let you go. I know you're a busy guy. Yeah, did you ever get tired of just being the replacement in Blacks? Like, you know, they kept calling and like you're such a nice guy. I mean, to keep going back there and and I guess the voice is what always brought them back to you, right? You had a sure. great voice. Did you just saying, you know, guys, can you just I'm tired of being the replacement guy and I'm tired of always picking up after everyone, sort of picking up the pieces in a sense, right? I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. But... All right did have a conversation like you know 
to sort of say it, it would be great to be feel like it was more part of the yes. band. Yes. Um, honestly, it never happened. Um, it, I, I was always the new guy, and uh, it, I was always going to be the new guy. And and so once you get that sort of in your head, then you just have to con do the best you can, work the best you can with what you got. I knew that they liked my voice, um, uh, but it was just the gap between us, the experience and the distance of their friends, the circles of friends. Everybody was separate and distant, and, and it was just uh, really hard work in that respect. But I, I, I did try to be part of the band. I just couldn't keep up with them. They were just, you know, way out in front of me. Uh, and that was just tiring, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the whole management structure thing, where you know the guy is on stage with you like ten feet away, but they won't they won't talk to you. They'd rather send a message up through the managers and then down to your manager and stuff like that. You know, it's a little bit spinal tap for want of a better. You know. That's interesting you say that because that was Ray Wilson's big complaint about when he fronted Genesis. He said you you, you always felt like you you could never just talk to the band. Ah. It's weird, isn't it? And, yeah. and yet, when you're on the plane, or if you're, you know, when you do get to hang out at the, at the hotel or whatever, they, they talk normally. Nice guys. I mean, they're all great guys. Tony Iommi's a lovely guy, uh, but the management makes it really worse. I mean, there was one point. Was it cross purposes? So Giza had his manager. I've got a manager. Tony Iommi's got three managers. So there was like five managers all doing their thing, and um, it was it was just. <laughs> So it's a that's United it, Nations that's, meeting. That's, that's what it is. It's a, <laughs> it's a board meeting. United that's, Nations meeting. That's sorry, Charles. There's an awful lot of what? Sorry. That's an awful lot of commission. Oh. <laughs> Three pages. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Five. Twenty percent. He's a hundred percent, right? There mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> good, good, good. Good thing you were cheap then, huh? Yeah, yeah. cheap. <laughs> Mate, it was so cheap. I, I was getting just hundreds of bucks. You know, not, there was nowhere near them. Nowhere near them. Right. But um, in fact, I think the sound guy got paid more than me. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. But, so, yeah, I, I guess on yes, that. Was, Go ahead, I, sorry. I can't complain too much. I mean, like, after all, you know, Black Sabbath is what got me out into the world. And mm -hmm. um, it's the reason why people know my voice. And ultimately, it's the reason why I'm here, like doing Thorns now, because that that voice has carried me um, from what I developed way, way back then. Um, so Sabbath is important, you know. It, it's got a great story, and and lots of great people have been involved in it. And I have nothing bad to say about any of them, really. All right. But, so uh, go yeah. So I was just going to say Thorns to be released January 14th. It's probably on pre-order right now, and you could probably even get it right now, I would think. Um, oh, yeah. Very exciting. Congratulations. Thank you so much for, for spending the time with us. I know that you're a busy man, and uh, we appreciate uh, you know your talent. We appreciate yeah. your time. And uh, let's do it again when you have your next project. Um, any yeah. closing remarks? Anything Sorry. you'd like to say? You, you okay, Giles? Yeah, I'm good. I'm all right. I think we've covered everything, really. Yeah, well, you're the man. Um, it's been a long time since we've seen each other, but... Uh, yeah, I actually, I owe you an email, I think, so I'll get on to that. And we'll, uh, we'll do have... that. Do that. Yeah. Um, now, anytime you guys want to talk, I mean, you know what I'm like. I'll just keep talking. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, no, um, it's good. You know, that's yeah, getting on. And uh, thank you for your interest in the album. It, it is important to me, and I, I am very happy with it. Um, so, um, yeah, bring it on, eh? <laughs>